Look, I'm on that Paul. I like what Paul do in in parts of the old, uh, uh, parts of the New Testament to the letters of the church. Paul likes to charge people, you know. He says, I charge you, you know, he'll do that. Well, I'm finna charge some Christians. I'm charging Christians. You don't have to accept this charge, you know what I'm saying? You can do it the heck you want to do, whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do, in the name of Jesus, all you want to. But uh, Christians, I encourage you to research the first century church. Yes, I, I, I mean, I think that all Christians, to me, all Christians should know about the first century church. It, it doesn't make no sense whatsoever that, you know, to me, I think they should make movies of, you know, uh, uh, of the first century church, the ideal of the first century church and how it was at that time. And what true Christian performance is, you know, what happened concerning of their outcomes, you know what I'm saying? Because this ideal of Christianity right now isn't adding up according to the scriptures. Mac just saying. But anyway, but my uh, title, of course, is talking about the first century Christians versus nowadays Christians. Oh, who is true? Who is false? Hmm. Look at that, Mac. Is how dare Mac to dare to aim to call Christians false? Well, Mac is not going to call nobody false, but the scriptures make him call somebody false. Just saying. I mean, the scriptures. I right? Mac can't speak can't speak for nobody or himself. He's not. I'm not here to speak about Mac Johnson. All I know as what Jesus said to Satan, he said, it is written. See, this is what this is all about. This is not about what everybody else writing to get somebody to follow their ministry and support it financially situation over here. This is about it is written. Yes, that's it. But I'm going to present. Well, I researched the uh, first century church. Hello. Um, yeah, whoa. I mean, the things that the first century church experienced. Wow. The, the stories that happened by itself. I mean, I think now nah, I think we should hold off on the movie <laughs> because I, I think people should register the stories first to prepare their 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 minds, hearts and minds on a, a, a Christianity that is sincerely that when G, when Paul says to live is Christ, to die is gain in the first century, you know, church error. That was the anthem, pretty much, because that's what they did. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, you know, oh, no, I got my kids. I got my family. Oh, I got a job here. Oh, I got my, I'm still in school. I can't die for Jesus right now. You know, it was not that. Die, the live for Christ is die again was, was the, the act. It was, it was an action. It was like, uh, for, uh, like if I was a football player, bam, getting on the football field, playing football, bam, go against the opponent, bam. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was like an agenda that you know. I believe in the first century church. You know, a, a, a Christian would if they were met another Christian and they said, "Man, I was being chased by Roman soldiers, and and I escaped." you know the roman soldiers and you know you hear all kind of uh things that's talking about escaping the roman soldiers hello how you doing uh you hear all this uh, well i you know i i almost escaped roman soldiers you don't hear uh oh somebody's on there huh? hello yo gotta go gotta go nice cool nice cool corvette he has to go all right, just again, seeing why I'm rolling my eyes out. All right, um, yeah, yeah, first century church. Oh, I had to escape these Roman soldiers to the other side, you know, 
They was trying to chase me and they was trying to get me and arrest me. And, and what you get arrested, you get tortured in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they torture you. Uh oh, oh, go, 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 go. Sorry. They torture you and they do a whole lot of terrible things towards you. And the thing is, it's a crazy thing, situation going on here. And the thing is, hey, it is, that, was a, that was a natural occurrence of Christianity in those days. That was a natural occurrence to get chased by Roman soldiers. It wasn't, you know, who, who, whose church is big. It wasn't whose ministry is blowing up. It wasn't, you know, who got the fancy car, who got the fancy house, and who, it wasn't no fanciness in first century church. You, you probably won't know who was the greatest preacher at that time, and I don't think they had famous preachers and that they known that did this and did this and preaching to thousands of people and, you know, gather a whole bunch of people in stadiums and he ministered the word of God and he was famous. I don't think they had that kind of ideal in first century church. I mean, that probably, that person would have probably got eaten by the lions or burnt to the stake or uh, persecuted severely. At that time period, it was vicious. I mean, the, let the story speak for itself. They go on Google to hear somebody, I think somebody on Google, they have letters of the first century church that talks about the persecution and to what extent, uh, of course, is in the um, Catholic, the, uh, the Vatican has them locked up, all the, the, most of the letters of the first century church in the Vatican, because they went collected, you know, information to see if they, hello, how you doing, man? They see if Christian, see, see what is Christianity, but really they was trying to take away the letters and redefine or more likely re uh, destroy the image of Christianity. And that's how you got your Catholic church. But that's another message. But the thing is, oh, they have letters that people, you know, got killed and brutally murdered from, I mean, Christians, I mean, torture uh, was was in a natural uh, thing concerning that society that people were willing to go through it. The sad part about this that always irritates me, they got work over here, uh, got a detour, but the sad part about the situation of the first century church it's in history. This, what I'm telling you, is in the history. You can research this history. And what this history that I'm telling you right now is, is in a, is, Christians can get hold to this. But this haven't, this information is not being taught in churches about the first century church. You know what I'm saying? You will rarely hear people, a, a minister or a preacher, come to your church probably to tell you about the first century church. You know what I'm saying? That's what really I'm, I'm the word, I don't think it is flabbergasted. I don't know. I'm, I'm amazed that churches and churches are not teaching about the first century church. You know what I'm saying? And how they handle being a Christian at that time. You know, that's what disturbs me a whole lot about me discovering and finding out what true Christianity is supposed to be all about and that churches are not teaching about the first century church and how much persecution and, and, and that they suffered for the how much they did what the word of God says pretty much you know that's what's just dangerous to me that that teaching is not going on in most churches and most Christians do not know about the first century church that is amazing and to me it's horrific to see the scriptures and we reading about the Beatitudes and Jesus talking about blessed those that have been persecuted for his for righteousness sake that we're supposed to you know be portrayed I mean we're supposed to go through a whole lot for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ that information should be given to every Christian should be you know know about 
what happened in the first century church because this is the performance that we should be having that kind of passion and that kind of agenda concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Paul really mean to live as Christ, to die as gain. He wasn't just saying that to say for everybody just to say it. He means that this is a thing that we're supposed to give our life for. You know, I like the uh, Romans 14 and I believe 17, I may be wrong, but it says, you know, that we live for, I mean, we, we die for the Lord, we live for the Lord, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Is what, you know, um, what, what, what we need to understand is that we live for the Lord, we die for him. You know what I'm saying? We, it's the Lord. It's, all, it's supposed to be all about, you know, the Lord. If you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, it's a, all situations. We give our whole life to him. And Christians these days do not, nowadays Christians do not understand that idea. They don't understand the idea of really truly laying their life down, laying their uh, status down, laying their, you know, uh, if, if they're getting ridiculed at their jobs, getting ridiculed at uh, school, they were getting ridiculed. They don't understand that how much they're supposed to stand on God's word. You know what I'm saying? These days, we as a Christians these days don't know how to stand on God's word and God's truth and how much they supposed to. You know what I'm saying? And that's the epidemic pretty much concerning of the ideal image of Christianity is if it's not in its authentic authentic image concerning the first century church that they knew how to stand on God's word. If it's put to death, that was a natural occurrence to the Christian, to do in the in the um, first century church. To be put to death was every majority of people doing that. It says in, in history, you know what I'm saying? You can research this history, that it was like hundreds and thousands to uh, hundreds of thousands for years of Christians being persecuted in the co uh, the Colosseums, you know what I'm saying? Being, uh, and, and, and been going on for a long time, a long, long, long time. And the thing is, Christians don't, nowadays, we don't look at that. We look at Christians, oh, I just go to church. <laughs> I just go to a building or on Sunday. I just go to this place, you know, and hear about Jesus Christ. We don't really know about really being a Christian at all. You know what I mean? We don't know about really dying for our faith and really uh, standing up on God's word uh, in, every, anywhere. We're busy too much playing the popularity contest and doing what's popular doing the, what the whatever is comfortable to the world and you know you know it's it's just we're too comfortable too many Christians are too comfortable and conform to this world that we're trying to you know do whatever it takes to not offend nobody concerning our faith and it's it's really drastically we're really drastically not really considered as Christians if we even look at the first century church we will look at we won't even consider, we will dare to consider ourselves as Christians to see the performance of Christians losing their life on a daily basis. On a, like, everyday thing, bam, a Christian's being killed. Every day, every day, you know, they announce at the Colosseum, hey, we got some Christians we captured and we're going to put them in the Colosseum. You know, come see the Christians get, you know, ate by lions, burnt to the sack. You know, for amusement and entertainment. And guess what? The co the Roman Colosseum is the ideal same system that the United States is patterned by. The, the Republic, you know, the Ro Roman Republic is... The United States is patterned by that own same system that was talking about, you know, to this day event, we're going to kill uh, so many Christians because we captured them over this village, you know. Hope you know that. But the thing is... We don't know nothing about Christianity until we know anything, until we understand about the first century church and how they was about losing their life and care less about what this world system has to offer. They lost their life. They like neck onto the better uh, uh, address. They was going headed to the better address, Christian. They're headed to their better address, to their heavenly home. They was about the better address. They weren't about, you know, ooh, my address that I got here on earth. They were about that address of heaven that, you know, Christians are not really too concerned about that average in heaven as much concerning performance. All right. I hope you understand. 
who should be uh, the true Christians and who's the false Christians. I'll let I'll leave it to you to decide who's true and who's false Christians, first century church or nowadays Christians. That's the message. God be the glory, him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.